Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7 p.m. on LA56. A meat cleaver attack shocks a South El Monte neighborhood. Deputies open fire on the suspect when he won't drop the weapon. We're live with new details. City of Los Angeles takes aim at banking giant Wells Fargo. The lawsuit alleging questionable actions that cost customers money. Sorted tales of infidelity and prolonged abuse between former Bell Gardens Mayor Daniel Crespo and his wife, who's been charged with killing him after a fight. The newly released document. Good evening, I'm Rudabay Shabazi, in for Colleen Sullivan. Now, David Dono, this is Artist News in LA 56, LA's only local live newscast at 7 p.m. And a man accused of attacking his neighbors with a meat cleaver is shot dead by sheriff's deputies. Residents in the area are left in shock. And I would just use the word Leanne Suter is live in South El Monte with details on the deadly chaos. Leanne. David, the motive for that vicious attack remains a mystery tonight. You see live over my shoulder here, this is still an active scene. Authorities say they don't know what prompted the violence. All they know at this point is that the suspect and a male victim are dead. The victim's wife hospitalized. A gruesome murder scene in South El Monte after a man attacks his neighbors with a meat cleaver. Several residents, including Luis Ramirez's daughter, witnesses to the horror. She just thought that, you know, when he was getting killed, he was just going at him like, many times. The deadly drama erupted around 1240 at a home in the 10,400 block of Enlo Street in South El Monte. When deputies arrived, they found the female victim in the street with a head wound and the suspect still in the midst of his attack. As the deputy made contact with uh, that individual, he could see that uh, the uh, suspect was... Uh, uh, chopping at a another male male victim who was down. Deputies ordered the suspect to drop the cleaver. When the man failed to comply and moved toward the deputies, an officer involved shooting occurred, but the dangerous drama continued. He then uh, got up and came at the deputies again, making a statement to the effect of "You'll you'll have to kill me." Uh, at that point, a second uh, deputy involved shooting ensued. The suspect and the male victim, whom neighbors identify only as Tony, were pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities say they don't know what prompted the deadly attack. Friends say there were no signs of trouble and say the couple was extremely nice. And it's like so weird, you know, that it, that happened, you know. Nothing, like, we didn't know anything, any conflicts in between them or anything. This entire neighborhood in shock. Now, the woman's condition is not known at this point. Authorities also have not yet released the name of the suspect or that male victim killed in this deadly attack. Live in South El Monte, Leanne Suter, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Leanne, thank you. Investigators are trying to figure out what started a deadly house fire in Murrieta. It happened around 6 o'clock this morning on Palma Vista Street. Firefighters arrived to find flames consuming the first floor of the home. The remains of 66-year-old Norma Perez were found on the second story. Her husband was able to escape on his own before firefighters arrived. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The cause of the fire is under investigation. And investigators are blaming an unattended candle for sparking a devastating fire in Monterey Park. The house went up in flames overnight in the 800 block of Hershey Avenue. The fire captain says the house was in pack rat, rat condition and that a mentally challenged man lives there. He was transported to the hospital. There's been no word on his condition. One of the area's largest banks is on the defensive. The city of Los Angeles is filing a lawsuit against Wells Fargo, accusing it of opening unauthorized accounts and other practices that hit customers in their wallets. Our news writer Robin Hayes has more from the city and the bank. Wells Fargo is a massive bank with more than 6,200 locations across the U.S. The ones here in Los Angeles coming under fire. The L.A. City Attorney's Office accuses Wells Fargo of engaging in unfair, unlawful, and fraudulent conduct, opening customer accounts, and issuing credit cards without authorization. Consumers can have money withdrawn from accounts unbeknownst to them. They can have fees imposed on them, unbeknownst to them. L.A. City Attorney Mike Feuer blasting Wells Fargo this morning as he detailed his civil lawsuit against the banking giant. Beside him, Wells Fargo customer Frank Ahn, a small business owner who says bank employees were constantly creating new accounts under his name despite his objections. I said, no, I don't need those accounts. It's more paperwork for me, more accounting work for me. I said, no. A couple months later... Um, I have three more accounts. I've had more than 10 accounts at Wells Fargo. I only need one. Ahn says he had to fight for years to get the fees for each of those accounts refunded. 
Wells Fargo issued a statement saying it will vigorously defend itself against these allegations and mentioned its commitment to customers receiving only the products and services they need and will benefit from. You note that they do not say we only provide those services or products that our customers have asked for. Wells appears to acknowledge the problem but attributes the problem to rogue employees. The city attorney is asking people to look through their old Wells Fargo statement to see if there are any accounts or credit cards that they didn't request. If you find one, you're urged to call the city attorney's hotline. The number is on your screen. It's 213-978-3393. In downtown L.A., Rob Hayes, ABC7 Eyewitness News. A Dana Hills High School Spanish teacher has been arrested on suspicion of molesting and possessing child pornography. Investigators believe there may be other victims. Investigators say 48-year-old Ezekiel Barragan has allegedly been involved in a sexual relationship with an underage male over the last two years. The suspected victim was uh, not the student at Dana Hills High. Barragan, who lives in Elisa Viejo, has also been a target of a U.S. Postal Service child pornography investigation. He's being held in $500,000 bail. Newly released documents reveal tales of infidelity and prolonged abuse between former Bell Gardens Mayor Daniel Crespo and his wife, who's been charged with killing him after a fight. She's pleaded not guilty, citing self-defense. Two of Crespo's alleged mistresses testified to the grand jury, as well as the couple's son, who said Crespo was violent toward him, his mother, and his sister. 1,400 pages of newly released grand jury transcripts contain allegations that Bell Gardens Mayor Daniel Crespo had multiple affairs and that he physically abused his family for years. Attorney James Devitt is representing Crespo's brother and mother in a civil suit against Crespo's wife, Levette. I do feel terrible for battered wives everywhere, but the, their remedy is not to kill their husbands or boyfriends. Her attorney has maintained all along that she was a battered woman who acted in defense of herself and her son. At one point, their son testifying, quote, We were driving right after church, and I remember my dad was driving. My mom was in the passenger seat, and I remember he punched her in the face. Daniel Jr. testified that right before the shooting, Crespo punched him in the face. The transcripts reveal that the day before his death, Crespo and one of his mistresses celebrated her birthday at Catalina Island. Also, that he had a commitment ceremony in Las Vegas in which he and a mistress exchanged rings. One woman testified they would have sex seven days a week at a house where they often sang karaoke together. Prosecutors say there is evidence Levette Crespo was extremely angry at her husband over his affairs with the multiple women and threatened violence against him, including a recording in which she said she would shoot him if he cheated. The DA should have filed this premeditated first-degree murder charges. Instead, they gave it to the grand jury. Hopefully, they will max her out. She's looking at 21 years. The prosecutor also told the grand jury that as she was still holding that gun that killed her husband, Levette Crespo said the words, no more. The jurors will have to decide what she was referring to when she allegedly said those words. Another wild day at the beaches with waves topping out around 10 feet in some areas. Oh, man. This was the scene today at the Wedge at Newport Beach. Today's 10-foot waves are down from the 15-footers we saw yesterday. Newport Beach lifeguards say days like today are actually busier. People will start to be able to venture into the water a little more. Uh, where they stayed out at 15, they think, well, I could probably handle this. Not a lot of people out, so it's a good opportunity to get some big barrels. This is as good as it gets, you know? People pay, like, thousands of dollars to come here, and it's in my backyard. A high surf advisor remains in effect through 11 o'clock tonight. Those are brave surfers. <laughs> well, there is rain in the forecast. What can we expect tomorrow? Danny Romero in for Jonathan Novak now. All right, thanks very much, Ruta Bay and David. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, we've got that high surf advisor still in effect till 11 p.m. tonight, and we're covering from L.A. County, Orange County areas with those beaches and the waves we were talking about. Ten-foot sets, some sets to 12. Tapering off here in the early evening hours, but by tomorrow it should get down to maybe five to seven, just below advisory level, but still dangerous conditions. Again, stay out of the water. Watch out for the dangerous rip current, also part of those big waves that come through. Now, as far as it looks outside, pretty nice. We've got our live camera at Disneyland uh, showing you the live HD look down in California Adventure, to be exact, in uh, Radiator Springs. Folks still enjoying 
the late afternoon, early evening hours, and the temps cooling down all around. 62 in Ontario and Riverside, showing Fullerton at 64 and Santa Ana at 63, so very cool temps right now. And that's a hint of what's to come. More clouds, more cooling, and yes, as you mentioned, rain. I'll tell you about that with a seven-day forecast in just a bit. Ruta Bay, David, go ahead. Thanks, Danny. Tonight, Cinco de Mayo is in full swing across Southern California. From music to dancing to food, there's something for everyone to enjoy, and the fun isn't over yet. Eyewitness News reporter Robert Olguin shows us how to celebrate. Mariachi. From mariachis belting out ballads to DJs to live bands, the common denominator tonight is a Mexican holiday that's become an American tradition. With this Cinco de Mayo, you gotta celebrate the right way with a good shot of tequila. At the Mexican village in Silver Lake, the early arrivals were ready for a festive Cinco de Mayo celebration. The margaritas, baby. <laughs> it's Taco Tuesday, it's Cinco de Mayo, and it's your birthday. Triple threat. <laughs> Mexican restaurants and bars across LA are prepping for one of the busiest nights of the year. People just want to have a good time. From nachos in Silver Lake to a roasted pig in downtown L.A. It's been roasting at 2.25 since about 7 this morning. At the Border Grill on Figueroa, there are plenty of culinary options. And plenty of beverages, too. I'm here with some co-workers. We're celebrating. It's going to be a good time. At the Regent Theater in downtown L.A., local heroes Los Lobos are playing a benefit show tonight. They haven't played in a little while, and so it should be a really good local show. Cinco de Mayo commemorates the Battle of Puebla, an unlikely victory by the Mexican army over the French in 1862. But in America... I, I don't think that they really are thinking about the battle. <laughs> the LAPD reminds everyone to celebrate responsibly. There will be sobriety checkpoints in place throughout the city. The party here at La Plaza de Culturas y Artes in downtown L.A. continues until 2 a.m. The cost is $10. Reporting from downtown L.A., Robert Morgan, ABC7, Eyewitness News. Oh. Getting rowdy out there, it sounds yeah. like. He's lucky to do that story. <laughs> that looks good. Up next, uh, fighting mad after millions bet on the big fight, the big reveal tonight about one of the fighters. Did he hide something? The new lawsuit. Plus, a heart-stopping sight caught on camera. A toddler walking around on the roof of a home with no adult in sight. What happened next? And with gas prices rising, our oil company profits soaring. Today, the consumer advocate group is sounding off.
A big new twist tonight after the big fight. It involves Manny Pacquiao revealing a shoulder injury that he says prevented him from beating Floyd Mayweather. Tonight, many fans are weighing in, hitting him with a class action lawsuit, accusing him of keeping that injury a secret and doing more than simply losing the fight. ABC's Ryan Smith with a closer look. Tonight, some boxing fans pulling no punches, filing that $5 million class action lawsuit against Team Pacquiao, claiming they duped the public. It's not only fans, Pacquiao could be hit with fines and even suspension from boxing for checking no on a medical form, asking if he had any injury to his shoulder the day before the fight. When the match was over, he seemed to admit he was fighting hurt. Three weeks before the fight, there's a... Uh, a tear in my in my in my my right uh, shoulder. The state of Nevada requires boxers to disclose injuries like that before a fight. But today, his doctors announced he'll have surgery this week for a serious rotator cuff injury, shelving him for up to a year. Pacquiao has blamed his poor performance on his shoulder, throwing only 429 punches against Mayweather. In his last three fights, he averaged over 700. Whether it was an honest mistake or an effort to hide the injury, some in boxing say ultimately the fans bore the biggest loss. It was a money grab and they hit it to try to make as much money as possible. Pacquiao's promoter claimed he did tell authorities about the shoulder injury days before the fight, but the Nevada Boxing Commission says they didn't know until just hours before. And that's what had so many fans so angry at this point, the not knowing about that shoulder injury in the first place. Ryan Smith, ABC News, New York. Heart pounding video out of Philadelphia. You got to see this a toddler teetering around alone on the roof of a three story home as neighbors watch in disbelief. One neighbor captured this video of the two year old boy in only a diaper climbing around the roof yesterday afternoon. The boy had climbed out on an open third floor window. Onlookers screamed for the child to stay put as firefighters arrived and tried to make their way to the boy before he could slip off the roof. The baby was reaching out for the ladder. That was the scariest part about it, him reaching out to it and everybody thinking he's going to fall. Luckily, a firefighter grabbed the boy, pulled him into the window safely. Another one-year-old toddler was also just inside the window. Police say the children's 22-year-old and 17-year-old mothers were arrested and charged with endangering the welfare of a child and reckless endangerment. Thank goodness they're okay. We'll keep your eyes on the sky tonight. Debris from Halley's Comet will streak across the sky for the annual Eta Aquarid meteor shower. These are pictures from last year's meteor shower. Pieces of the icy comet break off and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere, making them visible here on Earth. According to NASA officials, this year's shower will peak tomorrow at around 6 a.m. with as many as 30 meteors whizzing by. All right, that'll be a sight, but we're also looking for a shower of another kind. Yes. Heading our way this week, here's Danny Romero. Yeah, it's the kind we like. The rain showers coming in, and that is the bad thing. Clouds cover moving in tonight, probably going to obscure many views of those meteors uh, through tomorrow morning as well. Maybe get to a, a telescope if you can find one. Anyway, let's talk about the, the, the waves, first of all. Still the high supervisory in effect. Till 11 p.m., L.A. County, Orange County beaches, down to San Diego County. Again, set still very dangerous, but it's tapering off now through tonight, gone by 11 p.m., and then things start to close, return back to close to normal temps. Now, we're cool right now all over the area. Look at Wrightwood at 55, Big Bear at 46. Of course, mountain spots much cooler and expect some snow in those areas before the week is done. Right now, we're looking at 64 in Long Beach, 60 in Santa Monica, already kind of clouding up somewhat down there by the pier. And here's why. Here's the weather changer coming our way. This low, now watch how it's going to track uh, towards us. As it stays inside, what we call an inside slider, but watch, we move it ahead now. Wednesday into Thursday, now it's time to move outside on the shore. This will help it pick up a little bit of moisture. So now, by Thursday into Friday, with that flow around that low going in that uh, uh, counterclockwise motion, it now pushes on shore that moisture, that cool, moist air, bringing us rain, showers, and even some possibility of hail in some areas, and some pretty gusty winds as well, part of that weather picture. Now tonight, we're continuing to cool things down. Cloud cover in place. We're going to see overnight lows down in the 50s in San Bernardino, 40s for Pasadena, Palmdale, Simi Valley, and Santa Clarita. Then tomorrow, again, a cool, cloudy day. So the number's not getting much above the 60s about anywhere you go. You have to go to Palmdale and Lancaster to get a couple of 71s there. And to the Inland Empire at 69 in Riverside and San Bernardino. Now let's look ahead. 
Seven day power back to weather showing you clouds, cool conditions tomorrow. Now, rain chances coming in. Could get some drizzle by Thursday morning, but then the rain Thursday into Friday. Pretty good chances of the winds kicking up as well. But then by the weekend, gone and slowly warming back up to the mid to upper 70s by next Monday and Tuesday. For the valleys and Inland Empire, cloudy, cool day tomorrow. Here come the chance of thunderstorms and hail with this system coming in Thursday into Friday as well, and then clearing out by the weekend. To the 80s. What a difference a couple of days make from 62 on Thursday to 82 on Monday. We look to the beaches and there it's going to be kind of a gray May kind of few days with the rain chances coming in Thursday and Friday again with that drizzle possible as early as tomorrow morning, uh, Thursday morning as well. But look at the weekend. Pretty nice, sunny and warmer by Sunday into Monday. And for the mountain spots, partly cloudy tomorrow, then get ready. Snow level down to 6,000 feet. Strong winds blowing. And we're seeing those showers, thunderstorms possible there too on Thursday as well. But then cleared out by the weekend. The high desert, windy certainly. And those showers and thunderstorms possible for Thursday and Friday. Tapering off by the weekend. We go from 62 on Thursday up to the 80s by next Monday and Tuesday. But the rain will take whatever we can get. David and Ruta Bay, go. We will, Danny. Thank you. Gas prices have uh, risen 31 cents in the last week alone. Now a new consumer watchdog report shows oil companies making big profits when prices spike. Consumer specialist Rick Romero has details. Here we go again. Gas prices on the rise, breaching $4 a gallon in most areas of Southern California. Uh, yeah, they seem to have been fluctuating all over the place, but they're definitely going up. In San Francisco today, Santa Monica-based Consumer Watchdog, along with NextGen Climate, accused the oil companies in California of manipulating the price of gas in order to rake in large profits at the expense of California motorists. And they want the state legislature to step in. I believe the California legislature is fully capable of getting to the bottom of this and we're really asking them to do so. Not too surprising, California drivers are paying some of the highest gas prices in the country. Today in California, the average price is 3.71 a gallon, but across the US on average, it's 2.63 a gallon. That's $1.08 more per gallon than the rest of the country is paying. What do you think about the fact that we in California pay a dollar and 8 cents more per gallon than everybody else in the country? A little ridiculous. According to Consumer Watchdog's analysis report, refineries like Valero have quadrupled profits in the first quarter of this year. And Chevron saw refining profits double over the same period. The oil companies argue that prices are higher now because a refinery fire set them back. And the fuel in California is more expensive to produce. Consumer Watchdog says another week's fuel supply and reserve would make a difference. But Chevron counters with this statement about fuel reserves. The state has its own unique fuel blends, so the annual switch from winter grade fuel to summer grade meant increasing the amount of California fuel storage would have had no impact. It would make no sense to build up extra supplies of a product that cannot be sold. Now, Chevron made one more point, that the vast majority of Chevron and Texaco gas stations are independently owned and operated. And those dealers may set their own prices based on a number of factors, including the cost of real estate. In Atwater Village, this is Rick Romero, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, once again. All right, up next, a spectacular sight caught on camera. Massive explosion at Hawaii's Kilauea Volcano. What caused the big blast? And ahead at 7.30, local rescuers crash a couple's special day. And tonight, the bride and groom are speaking out.
All right, we have a fascinating story developing here. This is a live picture of some breaking news. It's a melee in tonight's city council meeting in Oakland. Protesters against the development project stormed the meeting. Some protesters have chained themselves to the council desk. Uh, the protesters are holding signs, banners. We've even seen some with a bullhorn. In fact, a, a man sitting right in the middle of that picture there, a live picture, has a bullhorn. From what we understand, the council members have left the facility, left the chamber, while the protesters are staying indoors. From what we understand, they're protesting the potential sale of land to a developer. These protesters say that land should be reserved for affordable housing as opposed to going to a developer to build something more expensive. We're going to watch this situation, see what goes on, but again, those are live pictures. This thing is still developing. Meanwhile, a spectacular sight at Hawaii's ever-changing Kilauea volcano. Watch as a partial collapse of a crater wall triggers an explosion. Overhanging rocks slid onto the lava lake, shooting scalding chunks of debris nearly 300 feet into the air. One USGS geologist compares Sunday's blast to striking the top of a champagne bottle with a hammer. The last time molten lava was visible in the crater was in 1982. The last time a lake formed similar to this one was in 1974. That's pretty incredible. All right, we're updating the evening's top stories next at 7.30. Including a new push to find a driver involved in one of the deadliest crashes in Orange County history. Who was behind the wheel back in 1992 when a truck collided with a church? Ban. Investigators want your help. Plus, two local families seek justice after the same dog maims a boy and then kills a neighbor's pup. Live from ABC7, 
This is Eyewitness News at 7.30 p.m. on LA 56. Top story at 7.30, a suspect armed with a meat cleaver is shot and killed by deputies after stabbing a couple who live next door. I'm David Ono. I'm Ruta Bay Shabazi, and for Colleen Sullivan, this is Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 p.m. Deputies say they arrived to find that suspect stabbing another man to death. When the suspect refused to drop the weapon, they opened fire, killing him. A second victim was also stabbed, and she was rushed to the hospital. Detectives are looking into what may have triggered the attack. The city of Los Angeles is suing banking giant Wells Fargo for allegedly opening accounts and issuing credit cards without customers' authorization. A complaint filed in state court contends Wells Fargo employees violated state and federal laws by misusing confidential information and failing to notify customers when personal information was breached. Wells Fargo issued a statement saying it will vigorously defend itself against the allegations. Investigators have reopened a 20-year-old case of a church van crash that killed eight people in Santa Ana. They've now issued arrest warrants for the driver who caused the deadly wreck. Orange County reporter Greg Lee spoke with one of the victim's family members today. A morgue. That's how a first responder described one of the deadliest car crashes in Orange County history. On September 20th, 1992, officers say this Chevy truck ran a red light at the intersection of Civic Center Drive and Flower Street in Santa Ana. The truck hit this church van with 18 people inside, sending many of them flying onto the road. Seven people in the van died, including a woman who was eight months pregnant. Her unborn child did not survive. They had never seen anything like it. The carnage was horrible. Five members of Sandra Castro's family were riding in the van. Her aunt, Sonia Castro, among the dead. She was part of her life, and we all miss her. Pastor Octavio Valentin was driving the van to his church. Investigators say he modified the seats to fit more people. None of the passengers had seat belts. Eyewitness News talked to Valentin the day after the crash. They're going to hit me. They're going to hit me. Family members of the victims say they don't blame Valentin. They blame the man behind the wheel of the truck. Officers say Fernando Hernandez Flores ran away from the scene. He had returned to uh, his family's home in the state of Guerrero in Mexico. And authorities have not been able to track him down since. But now there are warrants for his arrest in Mexico and the U.S. Investigators in Orange County are hoping to get new tips on his whereabouts so they can close this cold case. It's the sole reason that for, for this task force is to bring people like this to justice. My grandma lost a daughter. We lost an aunt. My dad lost a sister. And... It's not right. If you have any information on this case, you're asked to call the Orange County Homicide Task Force at 866-673-2574 or visit their website, OCHTF.org. Reporting in Santa Ana, Greg Lee, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Attorney General Loretta Lynch has uh, met with the family of Freddie Gray as well as Baltimore leaders as the city moves forward following last week's violence. Lynch was in Baltimore today talking with community leaders. She met with the city's police commissioner and several police officers and Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Lynch's visit comes as the city appears to be getting back to normal. Looking at probably to watch people come together and be as determined as the city of Baltimore has been to reclaim the city, to rebuild the city, and to make it, again, the great city that it has always been, has been inspiring for me. One of the six officers charged with Gray's death maintains the knife Gray had was illegal and wants the knife to be shown. State's attorney Marilyn Mosby says evidence cannot be released before trial and the investigation justifies the charges filed. Authorities in Las Vegas are dropping, dropping the battery case against singer Chris Brown. Police say the man who brought the charge initially said he was punched by Brown and a member of his entourage while playing basketball at the Palms Casino this weekend. The man is now withdrawing the complaint. It's just a little bit of good news for the singer who just six weeks ago was freed from a probation related to the assault of his ex-girlfriend Rihanna back in 2009. And a lawsuit has been filed against the owner of a pit bull that attacked a two-year-old. And now the same dog has attacked again, this time killing a neighbor's pet. Eyewitness News Inland Empire Bureau Chief Rob McMillan has the story from San Bernardino. It scares me to think that that dog is out there and could potentially do this to another child. Amy Merkelbach's son, Nate, is about to turn three years old. <laughs> 
It's been almost a year since he was bitten on the face by a pit bull. His mother can still remember seeing him in the hospital. He's so resilient. He's asked me for high five and then I look next to him and I see a cup and I pick it up and I realize that his nose is in this cup. The details about the attack are unclear, but Merkelbox says it happened at Nate's grandmother's house in Diamond Bar. The dog, called Bowser, belongs to Nate's grandmother's boyfriend. His father had heard, you know, the screaming sounds and he ran in there and by the time he had gotten in there, he, it was already too late. Bowser was quarantined and then released since apparently there was no witness to the attack. But then came word just a few weeks ago that Bowser had apparently gone on the attack again on this street in Cedar Glen near Lake Arrowhead, killing this little dog, Sarge, who was on a walk with his owner, Lynn Schliske. With one bite, chomps down on his chest, crushed it, and then shook him about three times, broke his neck. There was no answer by the dog's owner when we knocked on the door. We also tried to reach him by phone and were unsuccessful there, too. Merkelbach's lawyer, Amy Vadat, has filed a lawsuit against the dog's owner for one and a half million dollars. We're not saying all dogs are bad. We're not saying any dog is bad. As a dog owner, be responsible. To be frank with you, I want to see him put down because it's going to happen again with that dog. He has aggressive tendencies towards children, humans, animals. I mean, what more needs to be shown? And that pit bull Bowser is currently in the custody of San Bernardino County Animal Control. There will be a hearing as to whether Bowser should be euthanized in a few weeks. In San Bernardino, Rob McMillan, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, we want to go back to that very unusual story that is breaking right now in Oakland. Oakland City Council was in session when protesters took over the session. The council members apparently have fled the chamber and gone on recess. The protesters have taken over the chamber. Some reports even say that they have chained themselves to the desk. Right now, from what we've been watching, this is live streaming. Uh, we have been watching this megaphone being passed around from person to person complaining about housing in the Oakland area. Apparently, the Oakland Council was considering allowing yet another developer purchase some land. These protesters say the land needs to go to affordable housing. They've been complaining that every time an apartment opens up, there's so many people that try to get it, it's impossible to get. They don't have a place to live. As a result, they are here at this council uh, meeting to make a statement. Let's listen in. They took my house, my license, my cars. They took my bank account. They came to my house with some guys. They just got out the military, put a gun to my head. I caught him and put a gun in his head. I said, get out. They were doing this to me every night. Okay, okay, so you don't know what you could get from person to person, but clearly a housing crisis going on in Oakland. These people are there to say something about it. This is a breaking situation we're going to stay on top of. We'll keep you posted <laughs> on what happens in the council chambers. All right, we will follow that as it happens. And tonight, the state water board has adopted unprecedented mandatory water cutbacks to address ongoing drought issues. This, as we learn, California barely made a dent in conservation last month, but some communities are questioning just where else they're supposed to slash their water use. Eyewitness News reporter Carlos Granda reports from Sierra Madre, one of the cities hardest hit by the cutbacks. Lawns and landscapes could be a thing of the past. The emergency mandatory regulations aim to cut water use by 25% this summer. Cities and towns that use the most per capita must cut the most. Suppliers and communities um, that use higher water, that have higher water use outdoors, are going to be asked to do more. A few examples in Southern California. It works out to 16% for the LADWP. Beverly Hills is at 36%. The city of Sierra Madre is at 32%. We've been a little bit ahead of the curve, but even with all of our efforts, we're still at, according to the state's data, uh, about 12 percent. Some Sierra Madre residents say the state's numbers are simply unrealistic. It's a very, very silly answer to a, a more complicated question. Phil Scalzo says the city has been conserving for years. He doesn't have a lawn and doesn't know where to cut now. You can see my lawn is basically gone. This is all I have left in the backyard. It's all gone. And they want to cut back 25 percent. If they cut back 25 percent, I'm starting to not be able to take showers. 
I'm starting to have to really worry about how much I go to the restroom. Sierra Madre says it already restricts watering to two days a week, and there's a moratorium on new water meters and new building construction. They're now looking at all the restrictions. They may be unrealistic. It depends on whether we can get the communities, and I say that plural, the communities behind us, and get everybody to understand that we are all a part of this conservation effort. State water officials are meeting for two days to approve these new water regulations, and the rules would go into effect on June 1st. Reporting from Sierra Madre, I'm Carlos Grande, ABC7 Eyewitness News. A driver in desperate need of help, officers and good Samaritans in the right place at the right time. That story next. Plus, a police officer sues over his free hot coffee, and we'll tell you why. And a chopper flies right into the middle of a couple's wedding ceremony. We'll hear from the bride and the groom. Different kind of wind coming our way here with wind, rain, hail perhaps. Show it all to you in a seven-day forecast coming up. Senior housing is affordable housing that needs high priority. A police officer in North Carolina is suing Starbucks, saying he was burned after spilling a free cup of coffee. In the lawsuit, Matthew Kaur says the lid popped off the cup, causing it to collapse and spill all over him. He claims the incident caused so much stress it activated his Crohn's disease, resulting in surgery. His wife is also a plaintiff, claiming loss of her intimate partner. Starbucks did not comment directly on the case, but says they take customer safety very seriously. In Iowa, a highway patrolman and a nurse are being called heroes after rescuing a man who had a heart attack while driving. The dramatic rescue was all caught by the trooper's dash cam. Truck stalled right in the middle of the road. What is going on? The driver of the truck, Patrick Rourke, was driving along the highway when he began seizing. The highway patrol officer was initially confused, but when he realized what was happening, he jumped into action. Nurse Jane McCurdy also happened to be driving by and rushed to his aid. His name's Patrick. Patrick? Patrick? Just instinctual. It was a no-brainer. You know, people help people. That's what it's all about. I could see that he was seizing um, or having a medical issue, um, and then he just went limp. Rourke was loaded into an ambulance and rushed to the hospital. Today he's recovering and says he's forever thankful to those who saved him. A Missouri couple's Malibu Beach wedding is interrupted in an unexpected but memorable way. Yeah, an entire rescue crew, including a very loud helicopter, showed up to pluck a climber off a nearby cliff. Reporter Cynthia Newsom caught up with the couple. 
everything was so perfect, David and Jahan flew all the way from Pleasant Valley, Missouri, to have their dream beach wedding last Saturday in Malibu, California. Then... Is this really happening? And holy cow, what's going on? You know. Just after they started the ceremony, on a cliff in the backdrop of their wedding, a climber was in trouble. And he wasn't moving. And like, well, that's odd. And then we hear a fire truck. Then we hear an ambulance, and we hear more fire trucks and police, and they kept showing up, but they couldn't get to them. So here comes the rescue helicopter. I see the nose of a helicopter coming around the side of the cliff. <laughs> I, I grabbed her hands, and I said, oh, you have got to be kidding me. And our photographer got a great capture of that exact moment. Like, you can see her turning around looking, the bridesmaids are looking that direction, my groomsmen all just mouths agape, just, this can't be happening. <laughs> And from there, it was laughter for about solid 20 minutes. And it was just a really funny situation. It was just, I get that some people might freak out about it, but I have no control over that helicopter up there in the air. So it was just funny at that point. Later, the rescued climber, Adam, came to apologize. He's apologized to me again. He's offered to buy us a gift. Like, you've given us a <laughs> gift. You know, this, this was enough. Like, we have a story we'll never forget. David and Jahan eventually had their beach wedding. Adam the Climber is okay. The wedding party got a show they'll never forget. And even the rescue teams are getting something out of it. They want to use it now as a training video for future. <laughs> how, to how, to how to crash a wedding without, without <laughs> crashing a helicopter. That was uh, Cynthia Newsom reporting. That's a great story. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. The rain is on the way. and Danny Romero has your complete forecast coming up next. Plus in sports, the Ducks hit the ice again for game three of their playoff series against Calgary, hoping to make it a lucky seven when we come back. The 89th Annual World Trade Week kicked off today. World Trade Week draws executives and members of the Diplomatic Corps for a month-long celebration of world trade in Southern California. And what do you know, our very own David Ono was Master of Ceremonies for the 89th Annual Kickoff Breakfast. 
The program was first observed in the late 20s to promote the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. World Trade Week has grown to promote the positive aspects of international trade. It was a great event. Yeah, you said it was you were loved raving it. about it. Loved it. Had great speeches. So inspiring, many inspiring people, and it was it was a beautiful event. So thanks for. Let me be part of it. Awesome. Let's talk about a weather. Uh, rain is on the way. Here's Danny Romero. Yeah, and we certainly need all we can get. We've got the last the light of day hanging in there at Laguna Beach. A great shot there in our live HD camera. Folks have deserted the ocean and the waves starting to calm down. The high supervisory, another uh, few hours to 11 p.m. It officially expires. Uh, inland, we go now to Burbank. Our valley camera showing you at this point mostly clear skies. Now swing the camera over to downtown LA. A few more clouds there. And those clouds are only building up through tonight and into tomorrow. Right now we've cooled down to 62 degrees, which is barely a breeze of three miles per hour and our relative humidity at 62%. More moisture coming in. Look at this temperature range today. Average temp 74 for this date. We only got to 67 downtown. Remember just a few days ago, we were up in your 80s and 90s. Now, sunrise tomorrow morning just before 6 at 5.59 to get things going and get ready. Here's the weather maker to our north, this cold low that's dropping down. Now, see, it starts tracking inland through tomorrow, but then it changes track and moves over the water just a little bit. Now, if it stays in that same way, what it's going to do is pick up all that moisture there. And with that circulation, it'll bring on shore the moisture, the cold air brought down with it, and give us a chance at snow down around 5,500, 6,000 feet. Hail could be part of our weather picture as well, as well as drizzle to light rain, mixing in Thursday and Friday, but then moving out and gone by the weekend. Here's our numbers for tonight, down to 47 Beaumont, 61 in Palm Springs. 54 overnight in Long Beach and a cooler 41 for Fraser Park. And then tomorrow, everybody's cool and cloudy. 60s for the highs in Santa Clarita, Northridge. A little sunshine for Palmdale at 71. But look at Redondo Beach, Malibu, and Long Beach. All at 64. Huntington Beach at 65. Pushing 70. Riverside at 69. Now, seven-day power back weather. Here comes the rain. Cloudy and cool tomorrow. Thursday and Friday, we could see some drizzle in the morning hours. But that main rain event could start a little later in the day and then bringing us a chance of thunderstorms too. Hail, not out of the question. But then by the weekend, clear. And then by next week, up to 76. For the valleys and the Inland Empire, cool day tomorrow with the clouds and that thunderstorm chances. Possible hail in the valley spots especially. Still a chance of showers on Friday as well. And then most of the sunny skies by the weekend. Warming up to the 80s by Sunday and into Monday and Tuesday of next week. The beaches will be gray next few days with the drizzle chances tomorrow morning into Thursday as well and the rain and the winds blowing as well Thursday and Friday. Again, no huge amounts, tenth of an inch, quarter of an inch in many spots, maybe half an inch in some of the wetter spots. And then still clearing out by the weekend, sunny and warmer up to 67 by next Tuesday. Mountain areas, windy, strong, gusty wind and those thunderstorms with snow level down about 6,000 feet. Some spots a little dusting below that possible if it sticks. And the winds tapering off finally by the weekend and numbers start to warm back up again. But look at those numbers. Cold during the storm. 20s overnight, 40s and 30s for the highs. And the high desert, windy conditions. And then the storms moving in. Thunderstorms and showers Thursday and Friday. And then by Monday and Tuesday, back up to 80. Ruder Bay and David, all yours. All right, Danny, thank you. Yep. Clippers could get some good news for tomorrow's playoff game against the Rockets. Head coach Doc Rivers expects Chris Paul to play in game two after missing last night's game with the, an injured hamstring. The team rallied for a road win without him in Houston to steal home court. Blake Griffin became the first non-guard to have back-to-back -back triple doubles in the playoffs in 48 years. 26 points, 14 boards, 13 assists. J.J. Redick says Blake carried them earlier in the season when CP3 went down. He's proven that he can kind of carry us. Um, you know, Blake and I have this little thing before the game where, like, you know, we dab each other up. He says, best shooter in the world to me. I say, best player in the world to him. And, you know, he's got the ability to be that best player in the world. John Wall out with a wrist injury for Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Semis. Washington could have used him on defense. They don't get back on D and L. Halford makes them pay with the alley-oop dunk. Atlanta up six early. It was Ramon Sessions' show for the Wiz to start the second half. He scored the team's first 10 points to pull them within three. But Hawks start to pull away in the fourth quarter. Harford again with a bucket for two of his 16 points. Atlanta evens the series with a 106-90 win. Ducks like the Clippers are playoff hot. Anaheim is a perfect 6-0 and this postseason. They could make it lucky 7 tonight and take a commanding 3-zip lead in the series. And right now the game is in the second period. The Ducks lead 3-2. They just scored after Calgary had tied it. Full highlights tonight. The Nightwood News at 11 o'clock.
More news straight ahead here at 7.30 and ahead tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. Crying and screaming children are locked inside a school bus by the driver. Parents outside demanding their release. You won't believe what happened next. Plus, well, talk about a turf war. It's the best way to save water during a drought. So why is one city making it illegal? These stories and all the late-breaking news on Southern California's number one late newscast, Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. Do you know koalas sleep about 20 hours a day? Well, here's some precious proof about what they do the rest of the time. The video posted on Australia's Western District Health Services Facebook page is stirring up a lot of buzz. That's a koala captured on security cameras wandering into the hospital emergency room in the middle of the night. The automatic door is even open for him as he roams the halls. Once he's done inspecting the place, the little guy takes off back into the wild. I mean, it's so cute when those doors just kind of open up. Let him yeah. Come on in. He's like the king of the hospital. Yeah, the around. king of the ER. Yeah, love it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for our news at 7.30 on LA 56. Law and Order SVU is coming up next. Eyewitness News continues at 11 p.m. on ABC7 and anytime on ABC7.com. Have a good night.